A wise group of philosophers once said, when I dip, you dip, we dip. French dips, let's do it. What's up everybody, James with JB Suvi, and I'm so glad to have you back. If this is your first time checking out the channel, we are dedicated to bringing you high quality sous vide cooking that you can do in your own home. If that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, hit that subscribe button down below and click that bell so you get notified every time we drop a new video. The French dip, the true testament to beauty and simplicity. In its bare form, it's just sliced beef on a roll with a nice jus to dip it in. Of course, everybody likes to put their own spin on it. Onions, cheese, condiments. You can really make it however you want to. Don't get caught up in the hype of it's gotta have this or it's gotta have that. Sliced beef, beautiful roll, nice you to dip it in. Which brings me to point number one that people are sure to complain about. We're gonna be doing our French dip on ciabatta rolls. Why? Because I love ciabatta rolls. Who doesn't love a ciabatta roll? It's got a nice crisp exterior. It's got a fluffy inside that's gonna hold that broth great. There's no problem with it. And point two, because we're gonna use tri-tip as our meat. Now this one I have a little bit more of a reason for. Um, with roast beef and with the sous vide, I don't have a slicer. So I really can't get that thin roast beef texture. If I'm gonna slice you know, sous vide roast beef, it's gonna be a little thicker than I want and it's not gonna give me that feel. With tri-tip, I can get it really tender and slice it, you know, kind of thin, but it's not gonna give me that like steak-like texture that roast beef would. It's also better marbled, and I like that. So let's get to it. I'm gonna take you through a homemade ciabatta recipe that I got from Bincy Chris here on YouTube. I'm gonna tag her below, so if I'm a little bit too scattered to follow on the bread, you can always go check her out. We're starting with 280 grams of lukewarm water. We'll add a packet of instant yeast, about seven grams. One teaspoon of salt, and we'll mix it till it's all dissolved. We'll add the mix into 350 grams of all-purpose flour. And we'll stir everything till it comes together in a rough ball. Once in a ball, we'll cover that for 30 minutes. While that proofs, we'll bring in our Porter Road tri-tip. You'll want to take note of the way that your grain runs on your tri-tip. Normally on a tri-tip, the grain changes somewhere in the middle here. This is gonna be useful when you need to slice against the grain later. Since we're doing sandwiches, I'm gonna remove all the extra hard fat here. Now we'll salt our tri-tip generously. We're gonna dry brine this overnight. Of course, you could just go right into the bath, but I love that extra time to let the salt soak in. Once salted, I'm gonna place the meat on a wire rack and leave it uncovered in the fridge overnight. Okay, 30 minutes is up on our dough. We're now gonna go into a series of turn and folds. You'll fold one side of the dough over itself, turn the bowl 90 degrees, and then repeat till we get all around the dough. For this first session, we're gonna do the whole process twice. You can see during this first session, the dough isn't as uniform. After 30 minutes, we're gonna do another set of turn and folds, and then again, cover it back up. After 30 minutes of being covered, we're gonna go into the third and final set of turn and folds. We'll do these steps one last time. We'll then cover and then let it proof one last time for 30 minutes. We'll then turn it out onto an overly floured workspace and we'll gently stretch it from the bottom to get it into a rectangle shape. We'll then gently roll the dough up and we'll pinch the ends to seal cutting off the ends for uniformity, and cutting the dough into three portions. We'll rearrange them and give them a little space for one final proofing. We'll cover and let that proof for 45 minutes. After the final proof, we'll gently move these to a piece of parchment paper. These get transferred onto a preheated baking sheet and put into the oven at 450 degrees. We're gonna immediately spray some water into the oven. And there's the final product. Let's listen to that crisp. Moving back to our tri-tip. We've bagged it up and now we're gonna vacuum seal it. 
We'll take it over and drop it in the bath. Okay, let's talk time and temp for tri-tip. We want a medium rare product, so we're gonna go for 130 degrees on our temperature. As for time, for this application being French dips, I'd go for a minimum of eight hours. If you have longer, definitely try and do that, but at a minimum, eight hours. Now let's move into our jus. A jus is normally a beautiful broth that's made with a base of like a homemade beef stock. Unfortunately, I don't have enough homemade broth for this, so we're gonna use the second best option. That's roasted beef base, and while it's not optimal, it will do in a pinch. If you have homemade broth, feel free to use that. We're using about two cups. Starting with two teaspoons of this base, we'll add two cups of boiling water and stir till it's all dissolved. We'll add about a tablespoon of fresh thyme, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. We'll bring it up to a simmer and simmer that for about 10 minutes. We're also gonna be making some caramelized onions. I have a tablespoon of oil heating in a pan on medium-high heat. I'll add two sliced yellow onions in, and I'm going to stir them till they're all coated. I'll leave them be until they start getting some color. I'll stir them every couple of minutes. After 10 minutes, they have some nice color, so I'm going to drop the heat to low and simmer them until they build that color. We'll salt these generously, and if they look dry, you can spoon some of that jus in. Here we are after another 10 minutes simmering on low. We're stirring these every couple minutes. And then after another five minutes, I decided this is where I'd like them. These are perfect for a sandwich. And make sure you toast your bun. We're toasting this in a pan on medium heat. Definitely don't skip this step. We're also gonna make a simple horseradish sauce. Four tablespoons of sour cream, two tablespoons of mayo, two tablespoons of horseradish. Teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, mix. Add in a handful of chives, salt and black pepper to taste. And there's your sauce. Our dry tip is done, let's get her finished. I've lightly coated in some mustard and I'm gonna shake on some gospel rub from Meat Church. We'll coat it on all sides. We'll take it over to a carbon steel pan that I have preheated with avocado oil. It's on high heat. It should be lightly smoking. We'll sear the tri tip on one side for about a minute. Flip, and we're gonna do the other side just the same. Time to slice it up. I'll make my first cut where I believe the grain changes. Came out perfect. And then I'll go about slicing it as thin as I can. We'll fill a ramekin up with our strained jus. Now it's time to build our sandwich. Starting with a little bit of our horseradish sauce some English style mustard, a layer of our beautiful caramelized onions, our tri-tip, we'll close it and we'll cut it on a diagonal. I mean, come on, look at that. We'll give it a dip. I'm excited to try this one. All right, y'all, let's see how we did. I'm pretty excited. Been a little bit since I've done French dips. Can't wait to get into these. All right. There it is. There's your French dip. Now, the reason you cut it on a diagonal here is so that you can dip it. The more you know. Look at that. It's real good. It's real good. Really, it comes from the jus, guys. Put some time into that jus. Salt it to taste. It's just delicious. Um, there's just so many flavors that come together to make it such a great sandwich. Um, you keep coming back to these because they're awesome, right? And let's talk about that beef. The tri-tip, perfection. Um, using the sous vide for tri-tip to make it so tender that it's just kind of like that pull-apart roast beef feel. You can't beat it, uh, especially with you know how, how delicious tri-tips are. And that bread, that ciabatta came out perfect. I was very happy with that. 
uh, will be doing those again. You know, I know I might get some flack because I didn't use French bread, but really, you know, when you have uh, you know some poor options, you can't help but go with a ciabatta roll. But hey, if you got something out of this video, go give it a like down below. Hit that subscribe button and go watch some of the other videos we got on the channel for you. I'll catch you on the next one.